Hi, everybody. Away. We got tied up listening to music and listening to languages and saying hello in Italian and all these other things. Away. So how's everyone doing? Good to see you here today. And Merry Christmas as it is December. And uh, this month is a very special month as we get ready to not only close out the year, but we close out the year on a good note. The note is that Jesus is born. And it's a great way to close out this year and begin the new year with the idea that Jesus is with us. Ella, how are you, young lady? Very good. Those glasses are very becoming on you. And uh, we, we love them, and we love you. And I always appreciate my time with you, Ella, you know? Even before uh, Thursday talk begins, every Thursday we have a little time to talk and share our thoughts and everything. And uh, Ella always has some very interesting things to say. Could you, is it possible to, to have that greeting be loud so we could put it on the live stream? Welcome to Thursday Talk. Okay. So we were talking about languages and um, Ella wrote down this whole thing from the Hmong language which is from China. And uh, it's not spoken that much, but it is written quite a bit, I guess. It, it is spoken, but not, it, it's, I think it was mainly used as a written language. And uh, so we were talking about that, which I thought was pretty interesting, which kind of coincided with the, our Bible study last night from the book of Daniel, uh, which was about when King Belshazzar was violating the holy things of God and a hand appeared on the on the wall and wrote down words and uh, Daniel had, did have the interpretation for those words no one else could do it so, do you have it what language was that or this oh Italian Italian okay so we have we have welcome to Thursday talk and uh, benvenuto al discorso del giovedì okay can we can, I, can you do it again yeah. Can you turn it up really loud? As loud as I can go. Okay, hit, hit the play. Benvenuto al discorso del giovedì. Benvenuto al discorso del giovedì. That means welcome to Thursday talk. Benvenuto al discorso del giovedì. Oh, there you go. Benvenuto al discorso del giovedì. Giovedì. Benvenuto al discorso del giovedì. Giovedì. Yeah, benvenuto al discorso del giovedì. Welcome to Thursday Talk. And so, speaking of different languages. Yes. So I've been learning, trying to learn a different language called Benjla. Bangla. Ben... Bangla. Oh, Bangla? Is yeah. that what that is that you wrote? Hmm? No. Oh, that's a different one. And all I know is how to say hi. Well, let's hear it. Away. <laughs> that's good. Hey, hey, speaking of saying hi, let's say hi to everyone on here. Yeah. Hello, Galzanki. Good to see you. Hello, Christine. 70 degrees in Colorado. Man, I wish Hello. we had that, some of that over here. Although it is kind of warmer today. I don't know what the degrees is. I'll find it out. It rained. It was rainy Sweat. and damp here. Uh, and Eva, good to see you on here. It's 48 degrees in Haverhill. Uh, but Eva, hope you're doing well. Uh, we continue to pray for you. And so why don't we open up with a word of prayer? Okay. You want to pray? Sure. Okay, let's pray, everybody. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. I hope we have a good day. And you send your angels down us to protect us, to Very comfort smooth. us. I hope you sing a song over us, and I hope that you give the right words to say and the right things to do, and that you just bless us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. All right, so we have a, a certain subject today. You have something else there? Hmm. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? Amen means amen. Oh, and what amen. language is that? Bangla. Bangla. Wow. Mm -hmm. A lot of different languages out there. So um, we have a special topic today, right, Ella? <laughs> the topic is 
A plan and a purpose. purpose. Hey, your mom's here. Hey, Stacy Amendola Johnson. There you go. <laughs> and uh, the scripture is Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will work out his plan for my life. All right, let me give you the, the longer version. That's the New Living Translation. I'll give you the New King James. Hey, Angela, good to see you. Uh, Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect or complete that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. So this is kind of similar to my favorite, one of my favorite verses, Philippians 1, 6 that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete that work until the day of Jesus Christ. Hey, Danica, uh, good to see you. Hey, Roseberry, good to see you. My dear sister, I believe in Worcester. Uh, always good to see you on here, Rose, when you could make it. Yes. All right. So while we're reading this, I thought, I don't know. It's just a scripture I know by heart, Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm like, <laughs> Kind of goes with that script. Can you tell everyone what Jeremiah 29 11 is just in case they don't know? For I know the plans I have for you. Plans for peace and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Wow. That's right. That's a good scripture to memorize because God has special plans for all of us. Yeah. I, I don't know. I might have memorized like... I could say all the scriptures I've memorized. I don't know how many, though. Quite a few, I would say, right? Yeah. That's good. The more, the better. So. And Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. I think I know that one, but what do you have for that? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who, have lo who love him, who has been called a court according to the purpose right 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 all things work together for the good for those that love God and are called according and to his that purpose is from the NIV yep yeah, NIV so that means whatever happens uh, well first of all if we surrender to the Lord and give our day to the Lord you know give our life to the Lord whatever goes on in our lives God could somehow turn it around for something positive and something good Yes. Rose, Rose Berry said amen, Ella. So, yeah, thank you. Shall okay. I read the story? Um, well, let me, let, let's read, let's read 138, Psalm 138, 8 again, just so everyone knows where we are. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Okay, so the Lord will work out the plans for my life. Or work out his, ah, the Lord will work out his plans for my life. So his plan, uh, our life, our plans may not line up with his plans for our lives. And his but, plans are the right plans. But he, he does have plans, and, and we, we need to discover what those plans are. But he will, he will accomplish or work out his plans for my life. He'll be faithful to see that as we yield to him. Okay, let's go on with the little oh, devotion. Wait. The thing is, if I wear my glasses on Thursday talk, there's a blue glare. That's the yeah, how come you have a blue glare over there? I don't know. Is it from that screen over there? No. It's on everything. Oh, maybe your glasses are tinted. You probably have that thing in there to kind of protect you from the glare of the... Of the uh... Blue light glasses? Yeah. Yeah, I have blue light and prescription. That's it. Those must Together. be blue light. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I need to get those for these because my eyes are killing me all the time. So there's a blue glare. Well, All right. okay, this might sound gross, but did you know that there's this little worm-like pouch inside your body? A little worm-like pouch inside your body. Ay, 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 ay. It's about two to four inches long, and scientists... Two to four. And scientists have no idea why it's there, until recently. That little pouch is called... Appendix. Oh, the appendix. It's attached to your large intestine, which is attached to your small intestine, which is 22 feet long and not all the 
all that small. 22 feet? Mm -hmm. Which is attached to your stomach. You. Wow, so your stomach is really loaded. Because we're only, it's like I'm six feet, right? So I have, I have 22 feet of intestines inside of me. But I'm only six feet. So that means they're, they're wound, wound up and pushed, squished together and like that. But if you could stretch them out, they'd be 22 feet. Okay. All right. Those organs are all work, all work together to digest your food, except the appendix. Hmm. For years, scientists believed that the appendix had no real purpose, but now they believe it's actually pretty important. It stores good bacteria, not the bad kind that makes you sick. Oh. Which is important because your digestive system needs good bacteria to break down your food. Right. But when you get sick, especially with a stomach ache, the big bacteria can get flushed out of your system. That's when the appendix comes to the rescue. It releases the stored up good bacteria and gets your digestive system back on track. All right, so let's let's talk about this for a minute. So, like, for instance, if you take, uh, hey, June, good to see you on here, and Tony, good to see you as well. June is in Florida, I believe, still, and uh, Tony is in uh, New Jersey. Benvenuto. Yeah, that means hello in Italian. Hello. Um, so okay, so the the appendix in our body. Everyone, no one knew what it was really for until relatively recently, but it stores good uh, antibody. Uh, good what? Bacteria. Oh, good bacteria. It stores good bacteria. So the, the only, here's the problem: when you take an antibiotic to like knock out a cold or an infection, mm -hmm. it kills all the bacteria in your body, even the good bacteria. That's. So you know what uh, what Gigi tells me to do if I ever to eat yogurt because yogurt helps to bring back good bacteria to your body because good bacteria is good to have because it fights off diseases. But anyway, so what are we talking about? The Lord will work out His plans for our lives, or yes. so. Okay, so we're talking okay. about the appendix. Let's think about this. Let's do that. If God has an important purpose for even that tiny worm-like pouch in your belly, just imagine what he's got planned for your whole body. God created you and put you in this time and placed you for a reason. Mm -hmm. And he's going to use everything that happens in your life. Yes, even the things that don't seem to have a purpose right now. Oh. To help you grow and learn and be able to carry out his plan for you. Someday, it might be hard to see, but never doubt that God's got a plan and a purpose created just for you. Well, that's very okay. interesting. So, like, like something looks like all scrambled up letters and stuff. It's like that has no pur purpose on that paper. It's just weird letters, letters yeah. everywhere. Just like the Hmong. Oh, the language. Hmong people. So, could anyone read that? Are you right in Hmong? <laughs> and so the first, so they're both scriptures, if you didn't see. And the first one is 1 John 4, 19, which is, We loved God because he first loved us. You know that? Yeah. But that's not in English. No, that's. Hmong. But you know how you know what it means. Yes. Very good. And the second one is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, like I just said. Right. Why don't we try to say those words? Peb, club, vag to live, vim, newis, exub, club, peb. <laughs> That's 1 John 4, 19. Yeah. Which says what now? We love God because he first loved us. Right. I heard someone preaching about that the other day. We love God. We love him back. He first loved us. 
And he demonstrated that love by giving us Jesus. And so we love him back. Hey, Sandy Whitney, good to see you here. Mm -hmm. So even though things might look all messed up and weird, God has a purpose for them. So right, so, just go with it. So <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 138, 8, the uh, New King James says it like this. The Lord will complete that which concerns me. Or the Lord will perfect or finish the work that he started in me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. And I, I, uh, I put this verse with Philippians 1, 6, that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. So I wonder if some of you on here today are wondering, how, how will God finish the work that he started in you? Because maybe it seems like, you know, there's, there's uh, stresses, there's troubles, there's uncertainties, and you're wondering, what is God doing? And so just like the appendix, we should show everyone that picture. There's a little small thing in our body, but it has a big, big, big purpose. And, and for uh, many years, we don't, we, no one even knew what the appendix was for. But this is a little diagram, and you can see you have the large intestines and the small intestines, and a little tiny piece of that over there is the appendix. appendix. And uh, I, I knew a few people who had a problem with their appendix, and we, we call it a ruptured appendix. You know what that means, Ella? Nope. It means the, the appendix, which is a small little thing, uh, how, how big did we say it was? Two to four inches? Mm -hmm. So it's very small, but it, it burst open. And all the uh, toxins that were in there being filtered out and cleansed got released into the Whoa. body. And it makes a person extremely sick. And they have to go to the hospital and then they have to go in there and remove the appendix. Mm. So you can live without it, but it's, I guess that's a little bit different. But they do go in there probably with uh, microscopic surgery, make a little tiny hole and go in there and, and somehow make it come out and then put back the intestines so that uh, your body doesn't miss the uh, appendix. But, but anyway, uh, it, the, the analogy would be there may be some things in our lives right now that we don't know what they're doing. We don't know what God is doing through those things. It's like an appendix that's kind of hidden, but it's doing a great work, and um, we would know if it wasn't working properly, we, we would get sick. So there are things in our lives right now this is a, a recurring theme I've been coming across lately, that most of us have things going on that make us feel uncomfortable, that make us feel a little bit stressful, that make us feel a little bit you know, uncertain as to what's going to happen. But those are the moments when we have to express our faith in God and, and live out our faith in God. If we knew everything, uh, you know, we wouldn't have a need for faith. But in those seasons of uncertainty or doubt or questioning or stresses that's when our that's when our faith grows deeper so that we can more appreciate what he's what he's going to do later on down the road are you looking up something so i know three ways four <laughs> ways how to say hi okay let's hear it hi hi hola hola oh Away, away, away. Zavika, Zaviki. What language is that one in? Lithuanian. Oh, Lith Lithuanian, maybe. Zaviki. So, um, so what do you think is going on here, Ella, with this devotional today? The the name of it is, oh, a plan and a purpose. Mm -hmm. The Lord will work out his plan for my life. Romans 8.28 says, uh, And we know that all things work together for the good, for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And we know Jeremiah 29.11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you peace and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Right. So, that would be, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Gail Zanke said, I just told my, my, I was just told my surgery, 
for Monday was denied, and I'm in a lot of pain, so I'm stressing right now. Well, Gail will pray for you. We'll do that. We'll definitely pray for you. Uh, and Tony counted five languages. Hmm. I guess the English one was the fifth. So let's let's take Gail's situation right here. Uh, she was supposed to have surgery on Monday. It was denied. And she's in a lot of pain. Oh. And, and not only is she in a lot of pain, she's kind of worried about the fact that it's not going to be done. So what is she going to do? So we'll, we'll pray for you. In fact, we'll pray for you right now, Gail. And we'll trust the Lord that through this event in your life, this news that you just got, that God's perfecting something deeper inside of you and your spirit person uh, to trust God, to have faith in God, um, to, to continue to be strong in spite of the circumstances and your character will change and, and grow as a result. So let me, let me pray for Gail right now. Dear Father, we pray for Gail, Lord. First of all, uh, we just pray that you comfort her heart and her spirit regarding this news that uh, her surgery is denied and uh, let, her, let it be rescheduled. Let something happen where, where it could happen. And um, unless, Lord, you just want to just heal her of whatever's going on, but Lord, also take away the pain, take away the discomfort, take away the, the worry that she has regarding this thing. And let this event in her life uh, be a means to grow deeper in the things of God. So we thank you for it. And uh, we look forward to what you're going to do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So let me read another scripture here uh, along this topic. Okay. Uh, First, I have a question. Go ahead. Do you know Morse code? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I know of it, but I don't really know it. I mean, I know it. Uh, I know about it. Do you? Yes. Would well, you want to say hi in Morse code? If I can make enough noise. Can you tap on or clap your hands, maybe? Okay. So in Morse code, you have to make noises. So like. Well, say this was the table. Yeah. I would have to to say H to make the letter H. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four dots. So like writing four dots, and then for the I in high. Yeah. I would have to two dots because I is two dots. Okay. The thing is. I is two dots and O is two dots. But for I, you just two dots. For O, you have to go one dot, move over. So okay. one dot, move over, because there's a big space in between them. Okay. It's very confusing, like the R too. One dot, space, two dots. Right. So, so I, I see languages and, and communications on your mind today. Mm -hmm. So languages... Chinese language, that other one you were talking about, Italian language, Morse code, a different language, which reminds me, sometimes on our live stream, we have a lady that can't hear, and her language is sign language. Although... I know sign language. You do? That's another well, one. I know how to do it with my hands. I don't know, like, movements. I know, like, with my fingers. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, Ella, on, on the live stream, uh, sometimes, I don't know how this happens, but our words, are, our, our, our verbal words are put into writing on the bottom of the yeah, screen. Yeah, so we have to say them really clear. Right, or else it sounds like who knows what. So let me, let me read this. Let, Gail, this is, a, this is an important one for you. James chapter 1 and verse number 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect or mature and complete, lacking in nothing. And then there's a cross-reference to Romans chapter 5. And let me go there. Romans 5 and verse 3, it says, Not only that, but we glory also in our tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. 
Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So then there's one more passage in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1 in verse 6 and 7. It says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So you get the idea that you know the apostles were writing about you know, going through difficult times uh, and to have patience with God and to trust God that through the trial, your faith is getting stronger and God will persevere. God will show up just in, a, just in time uh, for the answer to the prayer. But sometimes it's the wait where the, the deepening of our faith occurs. Now, having said that, I also, and we also believe that, Gail, for you, we're praying for healing and strength and, 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 and help for you to be delivered from the pain that you're in because that you need that right now. So um, if it was an emotional thing, depending on the, on the degree, that would be one thing. But when you're in physical pain, which probably includes emotional pain, uh, we pray, Lord God, we ask for you to do it right now in the name of Jesus, right now, oh God. And um, when that happens and when God comes through, uh, then we look back on those times and we, we're, we're reminiscent or we're, we're reminded of God's faithfulness to always show up, to always be there, to always carry us through the difficult times. This lesson today, talking about our appendix and our intestines and stuff like that, reminds me several years ago, before Ella was born, I was visiting, Pamela and I were visiting uh, our son Jeffrey, who was in Phoenix, Arizona, and I had come down with a bout of colitis. And I thought I was going to meet Jesus. I thought I, this was it. I had such pain in my chest, in my arm. I went to the ER and they, they said it must be a heart attack. Uh, but thank the Lord, it wasn't that. It was, I had colitis, which was, I, had, uh, I didn't have enough water circulation going through my body, through my intestines. And, um, oh, I was in so much pain. I was in the hospital for 10 days. And it was a very difficult time. But during that time, uh, all I could do was lay there on the bed. It was, it was very unusual. But during that time, I did feel God's grace. I, I felt God's peace. I felt God's strength working through me. I felt my own faith arise in God's help to give me the medical care that I needed. Because I needed medical care, absolutely. Um, God did not choose to heal me by His hand. He chose to heal me through the hands of the medical people that were working with me, which they did. And so I'm very sympathetic for people that have health problems. I understand that. Plus, Pamela uh, has lived with asthma and allergies for all of her life. Uh, and she's always trusting the Lord, depending on the Lord for healing and strength and guidance, how to manage that, that problem. So our, our testimony is not that we're in perfect health. The testimony is that we're, we serve a perfect God who sees us through our difficulties with health. And so that's, that's the God that we serve. But Gail, we will continue to pray for you. Uh, anyway, Tony says uh, Mandarin is the Chinese language, is important to know in our country these days. Yeah, because you know what? So many people speak Mandarin in our country from China. And um, in fact, I knew a guy that spoke Vietnamese. Or, no, no, it was, it was Mandarin, that's right. And we would go to the Chinese restaurant, and he would speak to the waiters and waitresses in Mandarin. It was pretty unusual, because the sound is so different than uh, English or any Latin-based words, like from uh, Italian or Spanish, or even Portuguese. Uh, Mandarin has a whole different base than, uh, than those uh, European languages, and the English language, too. So, Ella, how are we doing? Very Good. <laughs> Uh, you it have, is 1230. Oh, it's 1230, but we have to do one more thing. Be a maid! That's it. Let's do it real quick. Gotta we got on a roll there, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Just uh, two more minutes, everybody. Ever wonder how food gets through your digestive system? Mm -hmm. Muscle power. Mama. Waves of muscle movement, kind of like the waves in the ocean, push food down your 
esophagus. esophagus esophagus into the stomach and then through the intestines. It's called per peristalsis. Since it uses muscle power instead of gravity, you could digest your food standing on your head. <laughs> I always wondered about that, you know? <laughs> so when you lie down, you could digest your food. When you stand on your head, you could do that. But the human body is amazing. But just keep in mind, we all have an appendix. It's a little tiny thing. We don't even, we're not even aware of it, but it's really important. And God has little tiny things going on in our lives to kind of perfect us and make us more dependent upon him. So Sandy, yeah, health issues are difficult at times, but we get our inner strength through Jesus. I know Sandy, I know you have some, some substantial health issues and we keep you in prayer all the time too. So anyway, uh, Ella, we gotta close this out. So um, why don't you, you say that prayer and I'll say a prayer, then we'll sign up. Okay. Okay, let's pray everybody. Lord, I know you have good plans for me, plans that will show us just how awesome you are. Please yes. direct me in the next step to take. Amen. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray for everyone on here today. Uh, Lord, Rose and Tony and Gail and uh, Danica and let's see, Eva and Angela and Stacy and Christine. And if I missed anyone, Lord, just... We want to pray for everyone to sense your presence today in a very powerful way. And Lord, we're going to pray an urgent prayer. Lord, right now, right now, today, right at this moment, we pray for your blessing to be revealed in our heart and in our spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would lift up any heaviness, any oppression, any sickness in our body, any depression in our soul, O oh God, any questions in our spirit, Lord. We give it all to you and pray for healing and strength. And we thank you for this devotional that you who started a good work are faithful to complete it. In Psalm 138, verse 8, that you will accomplish your plans in my life. So Lord, let it be done according to your perfect will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Ella, for sharing with us today. Amen. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you really soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.